And that's awesome. how you tow a 7,000 pound military vehicle with a 200 pound electric power wheel. This is how you build a sleeper power wheels that looks like your average bear, but just isn't in five easy steps. By the end of this video, you'll be going 60 plus miles an hour and towing military vehicles. Let's get started. small space with a lot of toys and this is one of the bigger toys of its nature yet it's yeah i think it's the biggest we've been working on full-size vehicles for too long we got to make another miniature one right oh. i think this is the biggest box we've ever received here and would you just look at what's inside of it look at that <laughs> This is Whoa. the largest Power Wheel style toy that you can buy on the internet. Uh huh. And we're gonna put that electric motor and this battery in it, which may not look like much, but these equal a whole lot more torque than a Honda 450 engine. This is like 18,000 watts of power. And more importantly, we're just hooking this up to the stock drivetrain and see what happens. It's a two-seater. Look at the seats. They're like actual seats. It's got a metal chassis and actual rubber tires. Not super beefy, but beefy enough that we can hook up some real power to it and just roast it. And then once we completely destroy the stock chassis and drivetrain, you know, axles and all of that, we can build a better chassis for it for off-road purposes or whatever we decide to do. It has an actual key? Yeah, look. <laughs> I'm so dopey today, I don't know why. There's a rip stick! I kid you not! There is a parking brake. That is amazing, that's my favorite thing. I wonder if it can take 80 foot pounds of torque. It absolutely cannot. <laughs> we're gonna, I mean, these tires, these wheels are plastic. It's gonna absolutely, like, we're gonna have to be very gentle on the throttle uh -huh. until we're ready for it to die, because it's just gonna <laughs> die. For a little rip. It does yeah, save for two. It is for two. Oh, this, this is, is actually oh. premium. That's the opposite of what I was gonna say. <laughs> Let me pull up the Speedo app and I'll hand right. it to you so we can see how fast we're going. It has an audio book. Let's go! All right, is that Let's, everything? No, I'm just e I'm just easing it over the bump so I don't rip the splitter off. Oh, that's a really good idea. That's that's all of the beans. Are we even going like a registerable amount of speed? Wait, oh, maybe blue is faster. Yeah. Whee! Here we go. Oh yeah, we're going zero. Oh, top speed. It says. No, it's probably because I moved the phone. It is probably three miles an hour. I mean, this feels like three miles an hour. All right, let's see how fast it is without me, because you're lighter than me. Oh, yes, quite a bit. Whee! I'm going top speed 5.6. Five? That's pretty fast. Yeah. I think we're about to change that. Yeah. This has an actual speed controller that takes DC and converts it to AC for the um, brushless motor. I realized we have this battery laying around. It's out of some hybrid car. I just measured it and it's got 66 volts. I'm gonna see what happens when we hook up a 66 volt car hybrid battery to a um, 24 volt speed controller. It'll probably just melt all the wires, but it's gonna be really fun finding out. Oh, look at all that room. So much room for activities. Yeah. This battery fits in there like it was built for it, so that's cool. So. Hey. Hey. Oh! 
Well, the lights are still working. Something's smoking out the dash. The well, radio. Smoke is coming out of the USB port. Nice. Here, give it the beans while it's still going. Oh, it seems yeah. like it's gonna work. That looks faster to me. Yeah. Way faster, let's go! I honestly can't believe this works at all. <laughs> we just quintupled the voltage and the speed controller's like, yeah, whatever, we'll kind of work. There's lots of electrical melting smells. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was exciting. I'm glad that worked. I didn't have any real idea whether it was gonna just like melt immediately or not do anything, but yeah. it definitely made it like at least twice as fast. Miraculously, we didn't set anything on fire when we hooked up that big battery. So I don't think we'll be needing this anymore. Gotta set something on fire. Yeet. <laughs> That's the guide on how to build it. The rest of this video is the Ethan guide on how to build it. Exactly. This thing does have some weight. It's got some girth. It does have a real frame though. I mean, real is a little bit of an exaggeration, but <laughs> <laughs> there's a few pieces of metal. My favorite part is the carbon fiber. And the, right. you know what's amazing is that that's actually a texture printed on the plastic. It's, or not yeah. printed, like it's textured into the it's plastic. It's not a sticker. It's not a sticker. Oh really? That's, yep. That's wow. Pretty cool. And see, these are the valve stems I was talking about. You can actually like get pressure. There's our brake, a real disc brake. Yeah, that's actually oh. quite stable. Adjustable tie rods with a heim joint. This is definitely the most impressive uh, power wheels we've taken apart. This is our powertrain, a plug and play setup developed by Electro & Co, originally intended for electric dirt bike conversions. It has a massive 72 volt, 33 amp hour battery, and paired with this custom controller and motor, it can hit 80 to 90 foot pounds of torque. That's over double a CRF 450. Definitely check out their site. They have the coolest electric motorcycle kits on the internet. Before I get too far on adapting a sprocket to this here shaft, what I need to do is find out what direction this motor spins when we power it up with the speed controller. Yeah, all of their kits are plug and play and all of their harnesses, only the thing it's supposed to plug into, it actually plugs into. Yeah, I was noticing that as I was messing around with it a little bit. It's so nice, which is a great idea for high voltage. 70 volts is not enough to kill you, but it's still enough to hurt a lot, so. <laughs> yeah, or set something on fire if you did yeah. it wrong. Jeez. That's the middle setting. <laughs> that is. You can hardly hold it wow. down. Yeah, no, it's, that's, that's ridiculous. Holy. Jeez. the torque that it creates just stopping. Yeah. It really seems a shame to put this drivetrain in such something so crappy. <laughs> I think what we do is we put it in here until we destroy this thing and then we put this in something way more deserving of its power. Why did you put a bearing in that wheel? Why would you do that? It doesn't spin. There's a bearing in a wheel that doesn't spin on its shaft. What? Oh, what a bunch of swindlers. Look, it's a bearing. Huh. It doesn't do anything. Looks like today is just a day of massive boxes of electric powered fun. Ooh, it's green. This thing is so cool looking. Oh, look at the seat. This is yeah. nice. Oh, look at the headlights. Dude, look at these. This is the 1000 watt M20 e-bike made by the sponsor of this video, Ingwe. We're gonna use their e-bikes to film the test drive of the sleeper power wheels later in this video. This actually feels kind of like a chopper, Steven. You like it. Oh yeah, I'm liking it already. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Steven. This is your chopper. I'm impressed with the traction these tires get. And there's like a gradual throttle, like a dirt bike. Oh, that's kind of cool. There's some other e-bikes that it's like a light switch on or off, and it's kind of sketchy, but this feels nice and smooth. You shall not pass! 
Wow. I have this, which is a large chunk of one inch solid stock. The easiest solution here is actually to make a new axle. Uh, I'll turn it down on the ends to match this size so that I can use these, these spacers, even the brakes, um, and more importantly, the wheels and all the adaptations there. Because obviously we could put go-kart tires under there, but that would kind of defeat the purpose of doing it with as much stock power wheels as possible. <laughs> You know how I was saying this lathe is kind of worn out? Okay, okay, that's pretty much the size we want it to be. Oh no. <laughs> it's making a tapered shaft. That's not what we want. Part of it's because this is long, right? And it flexes a little bit in the middle, but that only really applies when you're pushing really hard with the tool. So if you make a few passes back and forth, it should kind of even out. It's because the middle section gets used all the time and the ends don't. So over here at the end, everything's less worn out and tighter. And then over here, there's more slop. So it just ends up like, whoop. It's, it's an old lathe. Well, I'm still waiting for the, uh, power to come back so that I can use the mill. I'm tapping the ends of this because that's how the wheels attach. And then once the power comes back, I can take, oh, no. would you look Wait. at that? What are the odds? <laughs> <laughs> so now once I tap these, I can uh, put it in the, in the mill and cut a keyway into it so I can key all the stuff on there and then put the bearings on, mount it up, put a chain, and then go for a rip or something like that. That makes it sound a lot quicker and easier than it is, of course. But, you know, we'll get there. This is actually exciting. This is the first time I've used the mill to cut a keyway, which is, you know, one of the main things you'd want to do with a mill. I have my quarter inch key stock here and this fresh quarter inch cutter. So now I just have to get it all lined up and figure out the depth. We'll just do a nice little pass at a time. got the keyways cut into both sides of this, which means that now we can go like this and then put this on there. And then we can put these on there. And then we can put this on there. There's a lot of things that go on there. I'm gonna see if you see what's wrong with this picture. Um, well, that's not spinning on the bearing. It's just spinning around the... The bearing's just there to hold the space. But what they did is they made the front and rear wheels, wheels identical. So they didn't have to make two different kinds of wheel. Oh. And then they just... And that they, bearing, all that does is center it. It could just be a piece of bushing or it could be a piece of heavy plastic. That seems more expensive to make it just a bushing. Well, it's probably it. a lot less expensive than making two different molds. And then I have some bearings and bearing housings that I scrounged up from our piles of scrap. I have three options and none of them match. So, you know, that's good. On today's episode of Overkill Engineering, <laughs> we have a CAD file for making a mount for these things so that I can mount this to this frame. right Allen key back on here. Miraculous. It's crazy what happens when you get old. 
Well, it is your birthday. Is your birthday today, actually? Yeah. yeah. I'm old. Officially. Yeah. Well, making better decisions. <laughs> Hold up a second, Will. Where's your phone at? No! No! <laughs> before putting these on the axle. But here we are. Yeah, look at that. That looks that looks very premium. And uh, I can weld a little bit on this side and then weld a little on the back side. Of course, I have to get some paint off of it first. That's, that's why you daily driver, Will, but that's, yeah. that's how we get speeding. <laughs> Next time we see you with your phone in your pocket. No. <laughs> oh, no. What we're doing is installing some firewood in our car. Oh, nice. As like an inverted hood prop. Now I can set the motor in there and gravity will keep it in place. Oh, nice. That's, that's going forward, right? If the tires are spinning that way, mm -hmm. the ground's going this way, that's... Okay, just double checking. Yep, yep. Just making sure I'm not losing it. Will, I have some bad news for you. Oh! It's a spicy Pac-Man. I need a bigger one that's gonna come alive. Oh wait, well this isn't the Pac-Man, it's the ghost. Another power wheels. We got some different sizes of sprockets, a hub, and another one of these doodads to hold that other bearing properly. It's quite plausible to have a test drive later today. Oh, that would be premium. You know, some burnouts in the shop. Oh, this thing needs front brakes. So you can just do a brake stand and just roast the tires. Yeah, if I grind out some of the plastic underneath that, I should be able to just swing the motor down until that chain's reasonably tight. <laughs> I'm working on a secondary motor mount slash frame reinforcement bar. So it'll go from here to here, underneath the axle, and then it'll bolt to probably two of these bolt holes here, ideally. Oh, I hear Edwin out there droning around. Anyway, and then that doesn't really give any adjustability for the chain, but I'm not too worried about it because it's such a short chain, it'll stay tight enough to work. On today's episode of Extreme Over Engineering, there's my uh, motor mount plate. This is how I enjoy life, is by making things incredibly overly complicated. This wouldn't have been a build if it didn't have hexagons. It really wouldn't have been, you know? Robot's in a good mood today. I was really, really close to this working. Uh, and by really close, I mean super far away. The problem is I, I was looking at my tape with my head held upside down and I read the number on the wrong side of the number. It works excellent as a slag knife, though. Look at that, it just knocks right, right off of there. Oh, I think I can make it work. Many things. Where's your phone, Will? No, bro. I just saw you with that look on your face. You have a little phone, you wouldn't know the struggles. hook up the speed controller and battery and watch it spin. Also, there's still a little bit of flex over here 
simply because of trying to weld structural components to a Power Wheels chassis. You can see this whole bar here just kind of wiggles, um, which I can reinforce that, but I just kind of want to see how much it moves when the motor loads up. That's going forward, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just passing from front to back. <laughs> So I was still having a little bit of flex in this bar, so I just went hunting in the scrap pile and I found this piece of scrap that is the perfect length. Put a little notchy, dippy thing in there so that I can make another one for the other side of the motor because um, it's just not becoming rigid in the way I want it to be. Helps if you plug in the air hose. comedian at heart. I'm not doing it. I swear I you're doing it on I'm purpose. I'm not doing it on purpose. I don't want to You do just want to be jacked and you want to no. make everyone laugh. That's my hypothesis. I don't, want to, I don't want to be jacked. Wait, you don't want to be jacked? I want to be able to slither into tight places. And if you're jacked, you can do that. There's like medium levels of jacked, Will. Look at that. Got a couple little tabs I'm laying around. Bolt it onto there. So we mount the speed controller right there. Oop. Which points the cables straight up to the front where the battery's gonna be. Assemble this whole axle setup. Remove these disc brakes because we don't need them. And ah, I'm gonna have to all the way disassemble it because I also have to put this in the mill and cut another key keyway for this. I really started enjoying this project uh, once it was an excuse to use the mill. I have a problem. We're gonna have to have like a, you guys are probably gonna have to have a hexagon intervention for me at some point, but not yet, not today. That works alarmingly well. Now that's what we call luck. See that hexagon I made? It fits over the end of that bolt. Oh. We got brakes. Look at that. The moment of truth. Does this fit back on? Ultimate sleeper mode engaged. So I have a theory here. This is the throttle that we uh, got with this kit from Electro & Co. They, it's a cable actuated throttle, uh, which is perfect for most situations because you can run it with anything. But I've looked at the wires coming out of the throttle that came in this. This came with a speed controller that would have functioned rather similarly to this one, just less premium. Uh, it has three wires coming from its pedal that are the same colors as these three wires. Now, check the throttle panel here. Yeah, look at that, it's even variable. So I can do a light throttle, or some slow speed action. Or some full throttle action. All right, well that works. Awesome. Now I don't actually have to make a new throttle. I can just use the one that's built into it. 
We'll put this on a shelf somewhere. Forget about it. Yeah, look at that. Now I can access my brakes right here. Very nice. After uh, a bit of frustration with trying to bleed these brakes and get them to work, I discovered that the master cylinder that I had chosen out of the box of random brake parts was um, not really working right. Even after being bled, it wasn't really pushing any fluid. So maybe it's just worn out. Who knows? It's a mystery part. But I found another one off of a different machine that uh, I think actually has the same mounting bolt spacing. So I can use the same bracket that I already welded on. And it has a remote reservoir, so I had to dig around. <laughs> Gross. We'll see if this works. It's a, it's a Brembo, so, you know. And the new master cylinder works. Now that I have everything covered in brake fluid, including myself, the brakes are done. Which means all I have to do now is find a place to mount this switch up inside the, uh, inside there. There's something extra hilarious about working on this one. Like it's always funny working on a little teeny tiny car as if it's as if it's a real car, but because this one's still so much closer to the, like it doesn't have anything on it that makes it look bigger. You know, it doesn't have a seat that's too big or an engine sticking out of the hood. It's just a tiny, tiny car, but I'm putting Brembo brakes in it. Yeah, look at that. That might almost be space for the battery. Let's see. Nice. And that's about as far forward weight as you're gonna get. Yeah. Balance out the uh, motors in the back. Okay. Let's see if reverse works. Yep, okay. reverse works. That's a good sign. Oh! <laughs> oh! Yeah. Hey, yo! It does wheelies, so <laughs> there's that. That was like probably just a feather too, huh? Well, it's a little hard to feather, but... And that's with zero PSI oh, in the yeah. tires. Should we pump them up? Yeah, we should put a few. They say 22 max, so we'll go to like 15 or something. Seems like a good medium. I love that these just actually have air in them. Yeah, that's really nice. This is level one. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Don't mind me, officer. I'm just cruising in my Gitz Power Wheels toy. It's completely unmodified. <laughs> These bikes are gonna be excellent for filming the electric power wheels rip around because they're silent, but fast. So this is the Ingwe M20, and it looks freaking sweet. It's also got full suspension. We got front shocks, rear shocks, and these massive four inch wide fat tires for ripping around in the snow and sand and mud. And it's got dual batteries, which gives you a range of up to 50 miles. Wow, that's actually a lot. Without pedaling. The great thing about e-bikes like this is that if you run out of battery, you still got your Lambrafides to pedal you away. Disc brakes in the front and rear as well, and it has a seven speed shifter for when you're feeling like using the pedals. It's got this dual headlight, turn that on. Look at that. It's got this uh, LCD display here to tell you how fast you're going and to select your power modes and all that. And it even has a tail light with a brake light. So you'll be safe when you're cruising around town. This message is approved by Safety Steve. The M20 has multiple color options. They've got this super cool green color. You can also get it in black or white. Click the link in our description and sign up for a chance to win a brand new M20 e-bike and helmet set. Engwe has a bunch of good deals available right now, like the M20 early bird price, where you can get $150 off the bike, single battery version, and $200 off 
the dual battery version. Use code ENGWAYM2200 to get this deal. Engway also sent us the Engine Pro. This one folds up so it can fit into a smaller space, like the back of your Subaru. I was just about to say that. You can't fit a normal sized bike in a normal sized car. Yeah, look at how much more compact that is. This is a high end Porsche. All right, well, just so this is on camera, I got dibs on that bike. Oh. Mm, okay. You can use that bike, but I want to try it because it looks way awesome. This thing is ridiculous. <laughs> so what's closer, the fast food drive-thru or your bank? Fast food and then bank. They're both pretty close. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, 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 oh. Did you bring a helmet? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Watch, watch this, Lucas. That is terrifying. <laughs> this thing is ridiculous. I put it in full power mode. Full power mode. Full power mode. But that wasn't full throttle. Should we do a quick little draggy? Uh, let's get past these bumps. Uh, let me lean forward so I don't just wheelie off the line. <laughs> Are we ready? Ready. Set. Go. Go. Oh. It's so quick. I brought duct tape. <laughs> Tape anywhere you go <laughs> is my life lesson. Phone for a speedometer app. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. That was 40. <laughs> oh, I feel like we shouldn't go much faster than that until we upgrade the steering and brakes. Yeah, no, I don't want to, but I think it would do 60. Easily. You think it would do 60? Oh yeah, that was I was that, that was nowhere near top speed. That was just top speed of me being comfortable. <gasps> I'm sorry about that. Wait, what can I get for you? Um, can I get uh, two uh, regular uh, curly fries, regular uh, root beer? All right, that's gonna be your total second window. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Howdy, boss. Today we got three regular curly fries in order of seven poppers and a regular root beer. That's correct. Alrighty, 1977. Hey, it always makes me laugh when, uh, when the amount is a year. <laughs> There's a lot of, of numbers that could be that, but I don't know why. It always makes me chuckle. There you go. Hope you have yourself a wonderful day. Stay safe. Thank you. Very premium. Price? Yes, please. They just got smashed by a helmet, but... Oh, that's fine. He wasn't even phased. That guy didn't no, care at all. Not at all. <laughs> that's like he sees these things all the time. Like, how many people do this? <laughs> how do you not react to that? <laughs> Go hit the bank real quick. <laughs> Best part about going to the bank is the free candy. Peach mango. Man, you guys should film me doing my errands more often. I, I never get a chance to come to town during the week. <laughs> Nothing's open on the weekends. This is premium. <laughs> That had to be 50. 
That was premium. Dude, these bikes are awesome for hauling around our equipment. Oh yeah? Dude, it rides nice. Brakes are pretty good. I like this bike so far. I haven't crashed yet. It looks like I crashed, but I just got yeeted in mud. <laughs> yeah, that's my bad. I don't think you realized how fast the tires were spinning. Oh, they were spinning. <laughs> oh, did I get most of it off my face? No, you're covered, dude. Oh. You're covered. All right. Jeez. I actually can't believe it's that good. I can't either, dude. It is incredible. And here the police come. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Just pretend you're normal for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we took it through a drive through We're taking it to the bank. And then I see Will, I'm like, now I know what <laughs> It's faster than it looks. I mean, I mean, actually, it's completely original. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's exactly All the videos my son makes me sit down and watch. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> haven't topped it out, and I don't think I will. Yeah, it's, it would probably do 60. Yeah. It's too fast. All right, cool. Thank yeah. you. All the cops know you, Will. Yeah, I know. He's like, hey, Will. Uh, I was like, huh? <laughs> We're taking the bike path home. Officer said, uh, don't put it on the streets. And we'll obviously respect his wishes. Go back to Lucas's parking lot and have some fun. Does leave a bit to be desired. In the car on a road that's like the same size. <laughs> This is the most fun I've ever had on a mini bike. <laughs> Just chasing me. Chasing you. It's like I'm chasing a Porsche in a, G <laughs> a, G a Moto GP. Yeah. Like that's what it feels like. Oh, dude, if the steering was just a little bit better in this thing. Dude, I couldn't imagine. I would never go as fast as you're going right now. Yeah, I know very few people would. <laughs> yeah. I almost went the way. How did it feel out there going fast? Ooh. Um, frightening. But luckily I don't think my amygdala really works, so we're fine. <laughs> Riding my bike behind Ethan in this thing was scary. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, I like wheelies. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I'm gonna die. Oh, it's so much fun. <laughs> Ha <laughs> 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 <laughs>
You'll have that. This one? Yep. It's gonna be amazingly fun. Like it feels so race car-y, it's insane. Yeah, you just accidentally gave it caster, Edwin. That's why <laughs> it was steering better. Lucas just finished doing the wiring on that Humvee for his shop. He does speaker systems, remote starts, all kinds of wiring stuff, anything you could think of. At SMS Auto and Marine in Sandpoint. We're gonna uh, try to tow it with this and also use it as an anchor to do some burnouts because we don't have front brakes, so we need something to anchor us down. <laughs> How much do you think that weighs? I don't know, 100, 120 pounds maybe. How much do you think that weighs? Uh, those weigh around 7,000. <laughs> do you think it'll tow it? I to this, I weigh 160, so what? You think it'll tow it? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, about the most premium thing that's ever pulled a Humvee. <laughs> if this thing moves that, 7,000 pound vehicle, I'm going to be so impressed with those dwindle tires. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have to drive one of those across the country for our next video. Limo video part two. Two Humvees, us four idiots, premium. Very nice. I call dibs on riding with Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and we'll just burn these tires until they explode. I didn't really know how well that was gonna work. It worked so much better than I thought it could ever have worked. That like, was amazing. He got to the point where he was slowing down. He was pulling it too fast for yeah. us to take pictures. That was insane. That was probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen, yeah. honestly. Is this the first time you've driven any of the power wheels? Yeah, the power wheels? Yeah. This is a grind hard crime scene. <laughs> I'm glad Lucas is, uh, is, you know, cool with this. And I've never had one of these like GoPro bib editions on me, but like I cannot figure out how to get this thing off. Well, that was extremely successful of a test and extremely fun. The whole point was that this was always gonna be a temporary setup and we're gonna upgrade it to full go-kart wheels and tires later, so. We successfully destroyed them. The only thing we actually broke that's a problem is this fender here. Uh, but yeah. but we now can... it looks like a drift car. It is a drift it's car. It's a missile car. It's a drift missile now. Yeah. The Enway bikes were the perfect support vehicle for this video. We couldn't have done it without their support. So definitely check them out below. And I think we're gonna get to making this thing 
able to take the power with a lot better steering and it is gonna be absolutely insane. Shout out to Electro & Co for sending us this awesome powertrain. Next time we'll have to yeah. go grocery shopping and put something in the front. Oh, there's be plenty of room in here. There is a little bit of space. And also thanks to Lucas for letting us absolutely destroy his parking lot. Now we have to go get some brooms and clean it up. <laughs> wow, we made such a mess today. Got some new bling. Yo! It's the going on the wall of the show. We went from a top speed of about five miles an hour to at least 50. So that's an improvement of, a lot. you know, a multiple of 10. An order of magnitude, as they say. We also went from nice shiny paint to uh, a little bit more of a swindle also, look, look. It's now a low rider in the back. It is. <laughs> it's a proper drift missile. It is. It is.